and welcome to the Ukraine is Cyber App Education Series. In this video, we will do a quick recap of the main menu extension point in the UI Builder. Then, we will see how to create a new main menu in the Vendor Portal. Recall that we had learned about the extension point, main menu. With this extension point, you can create a new dedicated page in the Ukraine is Cyber Protection Platform for MSPs. In this page, you can add all the features and function of your product slash service which cannot be directly incorporated in other logical extension points. In this video, we will see how to create a new main menu via the vendor portal. Recall that we have a UI builder in the vendor portal. Using the UI builder, we will be creating a new main menu page for the cyber app via the vendor portal. Now, let's take a brief look at a demonstration of the vendor portal. We will be creating a new main menu page. In one of the earlier videos, remember our scenario of creating a new main menu page for a dummy password management application, where we talked about creating a page where we can get a list of users, create new users and reset password for the users. Also, remember we had created callbacks for getting a list of the users, creating new users and resetting password of the users. Let's look at the demonstration. Let's start the demonstration. Here, you see the application version section of the specific application. In application, we will create and configure the new main menu page. We start by first enabling the main menu extension point from the list of all available extension points. Once enabled, you can start building the page by adding the relevant elements in the page. We will add to the page a table that will show a list of all the users. So, let's start by adding the table component by dragging and dropping it, and then specifying its properties. Next, add columns to our table to display the data. We will add X columns, the first for username, the second for email, and also attach the model property to both. Model property is the name of the field as it is defined in the callbacks. At this point, our basic table configuration is done. Now, let's select the data initializer callback for the main page. Since we have configured our table to show a list of users, we will be selecting read users callback as the data initializer callback. Because this callback is to get a list of users, we will also configure response mapping. Click on Add Mapping Entry and Add Users as Mapping Entity for Items. This is because our table will be showing a list of users. Let's save the form now. At this point, when this new page will be loaded, it will automatically call the Read Users callback in the background, and fetch a list of users to display in the table. You can also specify which column you want to use to search, by adding the Search Column Model property. Now, let's add a couple of actions to the table. An action for resetting the password of the user, and an action to create a new user. To do this, select the table element and click on New Action, specify the properties, select when this action should be available in the Availability property, and then select the action type as Callback. Here we will select Reset Password Callback. Once Callback is selected, we will have to map Request or Response. In this case, we will configure Request Mapping, because we want to send the details of the user for whom the password must be reset. We will use it for Request Mapping to identify a specific user. Now, let's save the form. We now have an action available for the table whenever a specific row is selected. Let's also add one more action to the table dash create user, and also add its properties. Here, we will select availability when no rows are selected. Here, we will select action type as open form. This means that, whenever create user action is triggered, a new form will open in the UI. Let's call this a user creation form. First, Let's save this form and then create a new form to accept the details of the user that needs to be created. To do so, click on the plus sign at the top of UI Builder. Let's name this new form Create User. We do not need data initializer callback for this form, so we will leave it empty. We will add three text fields to accept username, login and email. Let's also specify the model properties of these fields, and specify all the other properties as needed.
Then we save the form. Let's go back to the create user action in the table now. Here, we will now specify the create user form for the action type create user. Then, we will specify an option for what to do when the form is submitted. We will trigger a callback in this case, so first on clicking an action button to create a user, a create user form will appear, and, on submitting the form, create user callback will be triggered. Let us also configure the request mapping, because we will be sending the details of the user to be created as request. Let's map all the fields as shown. Once done, we are all set. You have successfully created a new main menu page which will show a table with a list of users, and we also have two actions available for the table dash reset password and create user. Save the form and deploy the application. Select the relevant tenants and application varion numbers to deploy the application. Now, let's see how the deployed application looks like in the Ucranus console. You can see that we have a new main menu called as John Doe. The corresponding page has the table that shows list of users and also has two actions, reset password and create user. When we select a specific row in the table we can see that reset password action is enabled but create user is disabled, this is exactly as we specified in the vendor portal. Clicking on reset password will initiate a reset password callback for the selected user. Next, let's use the action for creating user. Click on create user button. A new form opens up where we specify the details of user. Fill in all the details and click OK. We can see that the new user has been created and same as visible in the table. So let's summarize once again. We learned how to create a new main menu page. We learned how to add a table to the page, how to add actions to the table, and how to configure and attach callbacks to the table. We also learned how to add a form to the action and trigger a callback via that new form. Thank you for watching this video. You can find a full technical on our developer.acronies.com platform.